Greetings, everyone. I've got some information to share with you that you all might find helpful. Uh, this is not legal advice or tax advice or professional advice, of course. This is just entertainment. But nonetheless, you should be uh, entertained for the most part. <laughs> so let's get into it. We're going to talk about estates, right? Because everybody wants to know what's the estate and, you know, to talk about the trusts and all this birth certificate stuff and all. What's it all mean? Everybody's oh, so much information. Not much has changed from feudal times, okay? Um, in terms of the way that things are administrated, they've just been redefined, um, a little more defined. We know that most countries function according to civil law, even though they're common law countries. Um, common law, civil law countries primarily use civil law. And then common law and equity are kind of under that umbrella, all right? And trusts and estates fall into equity, into the category of equity. But we're going to look at the hierarchy of estates. That's really important. Let's get into it. So let me share my screen here. See what we got. Screen share, share. All right. Here we go. So no, you don't want to see my Zoom launch. Um, let's see. All right. So I wanted to know what the actual legal definition of register is. Now, I know uh, my definition of register and pretty much 99% of the definitions of register on the state, uh, on the uh, internet, uh, the, of the definitions of the word register on the internet are the exact same as what I believe registered to be. However, I found an interesting one in the Black's Law Online, which is the lawdictionary.org for a register. And that led me to other discoveries. So let's get into it. What is register? Now, this is the only definition I found on the internet for register, legal definition. Um, with this. It might be out there somewhere, but this is the one I found when I did a search and, and went through a bunch of other ones, okay? So what is register? Rights which a king has by virtue of his prerogative. Hence, owners of counties Palatine or Palatine were formerly said to have jura rega regalia in their counties as fully as the king in his palace. That is from book one of Blackstone's Commentaries 117. The term is sometimes used in the same sense in the Spanish law. Some writers divide the royal prerogative into majora and minora regalia, the former including the real dignity and power the latter, the revenue or fiscal prerogatives of the crown. So this is interesting, okay? So first, we want to know what some of these terms in this definition actually mean. The phrase by virtue of means by authority or because of. So rights which a king has by authority or because of his prerogative. So what does prerogative mean? Let's see. Well, there's the word estate, bears estate. I'm not sure what they're saying here, but we would have to look up th this citing here to, to understand what that means. Okay. The word is also used to denote the subject matter insured in a policy. It's interesting. Ah, equity pleading. The stating part of a bill, it contains a narrative of the facts and circumstances of the plaintiff's case and the wrongs of which he complains. The names of the persons by whom done and against whom he seeks redress. Okay, now that kind of really doesn't make a whole lot of sense here. Okay, 
by virtue of his prerogative. So I went and looked further, and we'll get into that in a minute. Now, what is Manora Regalia and Majora Regalia? Now look, the former, the regal dignity and power. Okay, so Majora, Majora Regalia, okay, including uh, the regal dignity and power and the latter revenue fiscal prerogatives. So Majora Regalia, what does that, what, what major, Majora, majority, the age of majority, right? The age of majority, which includes the regal dignity and power, menorah, what is the menorah regalia? The revenue or fiscal prerogatives of the crown, okay? Remember this word prerogative, minority, menorah. So this is all interesting, okay? So I went to my Black's Fourth to look up the term register, and I found it's your standard red um, definition of register. But it wasn't until I went to regalia that I found the definition of register, right, which a king has by virtue of his prerogative. Hence, owners of counties palatine were formally said to have jura regalia in their counties as fully as the king in his palace. Now, let's go over to regalia. Royal rights are those rights which a king has by virtue of his prerogative. Hence, owners of a county's palatine were formally said to have jura regalia in their counties as fully as the king in his palace. Okay, so this is where the definition came from. So register with the word, you know, the root word regis. This is all about the king. Okay, so whenever we register something, we're registering it with the king. And we're going to tie the birth certificate into this in a few minutes, and it's going to blow your mind, okay? Um, and maybe it won't. Maybe you've been at this a while, and it won't blow your mind. But I thought it, it blew my mind. It was pretty cool, because it was one of those things where I was like, oh, wow, this just clears it up even more, okay? So here we, again, we have some writers down here, we have some writers divide the royal prerogative into majora and minora regalia, the former including the regal dignity and power, the latter revenue or fiscal prerogatives, what we had already read, right? Mm -hmm. So we wanna see what prerogatives, uh, prerogative means, okay? Um, so let's go up, I went a little too far. We'll find prerogative in just a second. All right, where are you, prerogative? Oops, that's right. We got to get into the PRs. PR, PR. No P. All right, let's see what we got here. You move my. Uh, the other way here. All right. Um. <laughs> prerogative, prerogative. It's up here, folks. Well, maybe I wasn't as close to prerogative as I thought, but here it is. Prerogative law, prerogative writs, prerogative court. Prerogative, an exclusive or, or peculiar privilege, the special power, privilege, immunity, or advantage vested in an official person, either generally or in respect to the things of his office or in an official body as a court or legislature, attorney general, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's a citing uh, versus blossom. Okay. In English law, which is where this comes from, a power or will which is discretionary and above and uncontrolled by any other will. Okay, very interesting. That special preeminence which the king or queen has over and above all persons 
in right of his or her regal dignity, a term used to denote those rights and capacities which the sovereign enjoys alone in contradistinction to others. It is sometimes applied by law writers to the thing over which the power or will is exercised as fiscal prerogatives, meaning king's revenues. Mm -hmm. Let's go back. And this is how long it takes me sometimes to understand a word. So it's very important that you really study the law dictionary and the words. Okay. Now, rights by which a king has by virtue of. Now, remember, virtue of is means authority of or because of. Virtue of his prerogative. Let's go back to what the prerogative is. A power, virtue, okay, so by virtue of his power or will, which is discretionary. So, in other words, the king is the king and a queen is a queen because they said so, period. Yes, it's really that stupid simple, okay? This is why declarations of status are very important because you're claiming your king status back. Now, in the United States of America, on the continent of America, the way they set up the structure here, they predicated everything on us all being kings and queens and that no authority was higher, okay? What they were trying to do was reverse the estate mechanism. And we're going to get into that in a second and show you how this ties together. Okay. So that brought me, and if you want to know uh, where Blackstones is, just go to the Avalon, Avalon Project and um, you can find Blackstones commentaries here. And it has, you know, all of Blackstones um, commentaries on these subjects. Okay. And they're, they're all, they all tie into today. I mean, it's a great, great thing to, to go through, to, to read through. Really, really is. It explains a lot. Now, let's get into Estates of the Realm, because this is where it all goes down. The Estates of the Realm, or Three Estates, were the broad orders of social hierarchy used in Christendom from the Middle Ages to early modern Europe, and quite honestly, till now, because it's still going on, okay? Different systems for dividing society members into estates developed and evolved over time. The best known system is the French system, a three estate system used until the French Revolution. The monarchy included the king and the queen, while the system was made up of the first estate. Okay, now check this out. The clergy. Hello, Vatican. The second estate, the nobles. Hello, common law, right? Because the nobles were the ones that created the common law, the knights, back in 1215, when they held the sword to King John's throat and made him sign the Magna Carta. So they're already one estate below in the common law. That's why I personally don't say, don't rely on just common law, okay? Because the first estate, which is the clergy, is where the equity came from, the bishops, all right? And then the third estate, the, peasant, the peasants and bourgeoisie, hello, straw man, okay? And those that keep answering for it, that's the third estate. You're of the lowest estate. Now, that was in France. They came up with different estate structures um, in different countries that are all relative, but some lumped two estates together and had a two estate system and some lumped uh, estate or um, expanded estates into a four estate system, but they were relatively similar. And you should read this article on Wikipedia because it gives you a great understanding of the basics of how this thing laid out, okay? So let's go down to... All right, here we go. Uh, that's Kingdom of France. Now, I want you to see over here on the right, this little depiction here 
of uh, representation of three estates under Jesus. All right. You, the first estate, you pray. The second estate, you protect. The third estate, and you work. Okay. That's interesting, isn't it? They don't go into much about that, but they have this little picture here, which is interesting, which I'm sure we can dive into further. All right. The first estate comprised the entire clergy, the entire clergy, former leaders within religions, okay, traditionally divided into higher and lower clergy. Now, you guys can go on Wikipedia and type in estates of the realm and read all of this, okay? I did, and I got a lot out of it, all right? So there's a fourth estate, which would be estates general which comprise um, people outside the state, but they're considered, and it's not what, not what you would think when you think outside the state like we do today. We think outside the state as we are free, but at that time, you were pretty much dirt poor, and you were nothing, and you did not have any rights if you were of the fourth estate, okay, in these certain areas. So you have, they go over Scotland, Ireland, Sweden, and Finland, um, low countries, uh, lower countries. Then they get to the Holy Roman Empire, the Russian Empire, the Kingdom of Portugal, very important, Principality of Catalonia. Now, the Holy Roman Empire, let's look at this interesting tidbit here. The Holy Roman Empire had the imperial dialect, Reichstag, Reich, Reichstag, however they say it. The clergy was represented by the independent prince bishops, prince archbishops, and prince abbots of the many monasteries, okay? The nobility consisted of independent aristocratic rulers, secular prince electors. And if you look, a prince elector is like the electoral college of the pope. See how this all follows the electoral college, the electoral college they use for the the election of the president. I mean, this all follows suit, guys. This is just all lining up, okay? Um, and if you read the, the Paris Peace Treaty, you know, where they talk about the um, prince elector of the Holy Roman Empire, right? The King of England, um, and the King of France, rather. Anyhow, okay. So, you guys can read all through that, but there's another interesting point here that I want to find about the United States. Where did that go? Dynamics. Okay, um, it's in here somewhere, but I may just tell you and y'all can find it because I don't feel like scanning through this whole thing. Holy Roman Empire lost much of its for this carrier retained a more nominal universal preeminence. No, 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 that's not where it is. Second state, third state. Okay, basically what I'm looking for, and it's in here somewhere, I just haven't uh, pinned it, so I don't really remember where exactly it is, that the United States, the difference with the United States was that, not the difference, but they made the first, second, and third estate the executive, legislative, and judicial branches, okay? That's what it's supposed to be, right? Because we are supposed to be the kings and queens, but they flipped all that around with a birth certificate when you registered, register with the king, the regis, you registered the property, was given over and you took now a lower estate even than the three estates so you're beneath them all right um at which is the peasant you know the uh the one that has basically no the poor you have no rights when you're that birth certificate thing you're not even on the map because you're one of that you're that fourth estate where you have no right. It says usually refers to the fourth estate usually refers to forces outside the established power structure, uh, most commonly in reference to the independent press or media, 
basically saying the press or media would be like the fourth estate. They're outside the power of the um, power structure, so to speak. However, historically in Northern and Eastern Europe, the fourth estate meant rural commoners. Okay, so you're not, if you're the fourth estate, you're, you're not really, I mean, you have a right to speak up essentially, but you're not really, you don't really have your rights intact. Um, at least not the rights of a king or queen. And, and actually all the estates are below a king and queen. That's the thing here. That's what is kind of uh, amazing to me is that, and, and makes sense why now some of my writings and my declaration of status and stuff like that make a lot of sense and are really powerful because we're claiming that king position, that queen position over the estates, taking general executor, which means now we are of the highest of those three estates in the clergy, so to speak, because we're doing the will of the deceased. So we're, we're e executing that. So we have this standing of, hey, we're exonerated from the claim. We're actually standing as an agent of the king, so to speak, to administrate these, this estate. So, you know, that first estate is the spiritual, right? The second estate is the the land, the one that we are the nobles or the or the, um, the the knights, right? The common law, and then the third is basically the estate of the dead guy, which we are saying we are there to execute, right? The executor, and then we're the creditor of that thing. So we're still functioning within these three estates if we're not taking the position of king or queen. And that's what's really important. So I definitely would study this stuff if you're viewing this video because it all ties together with what they're doing today. It's all about these estates, all about the estates. You know, and anybody that poo poos that, hey, you know what, you're missing out because it's all about these estates. So, how we rectify that is yet to be discovered, but we're on to it. A lot of us are on to it. Okay. Um, what I see right now in the freedom community is more of a catch and release type of remedy, so to speak. In other words, the government, be it police officers, um, you know, uh, um, prosecutors, whomever, you know, FBI, it doesn't matter, federal, state, are catching people in crimes or whatever, debt, whatever. And we're able to now, we're so good at it, we can go in and abate that. We can... Um, uh, you know, go after them with charges and things like that because of the way that we're administrating the estate, because we're declaring the status, even if it's in one simple affidavit, we're declaring the status of the estate. So now we're going in and saying, hey, uh, -uh you can't do this. However, remedy is a whole different ball game, right? Remedy as far as getting paid on these claims or you know, being paid for your injuries and people are doing it, you know, and that's all good. However, the solution of totally curing the issue of being a king or queen or not has not been perfected. And there are many people on the internet that are preaching it like it's been perfected. And many of us are running to these people thinking they have it all figured out, but they really don't. By the time you get over there, it's like, well, we're in the process. We're almost there. I mean, that's where, that's just where we're at. So for me, it's important that when people come to uh, House of Marcus, uh, REM, private management, privatestatetrust.org, and they're going through similar procedures, I know where those people are and what they've done because it's my template. So the next step I take, they take because I know where they are, right? Where my understanding is, is to become the king and queen, undoubtedly the king and queen. And I've got a process of, for that that I'm working on um, that's, well, 
that's pretty much done. And um, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. However, I'm not saying I have any answers to your ending your birth certificate slavery or, or anything like that. Um, I have a lot of good ways to, you know, be released, so to speak, caught and released, um, just like everybody else out there, you know, but the end is coming soon. The end is coming soon. We're figuring it out and they know it. They know it and the time is up and it's a spiritual time. It's the time when the meek inherit the earth and how we do that is taking our, our airship back, right? Heirs to the kingdom of heaven. So anyway, look that stuff up. I hope that all starts to make sense for everybody in terms of the estates and how it all applies. Um, if you need more information, of course, you can go to uh, privateestatetrust.org, uh, send an email, read some of the stuff there. The website needs a lot of updating to reflect a lot of the new stuff we're working on, and we will get there and we will be doing that. We are also um, creating a private member association um, so that we can help people without any interference from uh, any, you know, uh, state, county, local or uh, local state or federal government. So um, anyway, tune in and, uh, you know, hopefully you just keep on your path. You keep learning. You're heading for freedom, just like the rest of us. True freedom, not any of this bull crap under the estates. <laughs>